And now what we're here for, uh, I know one of you is familiar with geothermal. Anybody else mess with any geothermal in your project? A few here. Geothermal is, is, is the main topic of what I'm here for, but I'm also solar hot water is something if you're not run into that, you probably will be. And radiant floor is not so much tying in with the top heading as far as radiant floor itself, but it ties in real well with solar. And, and the reason is, is because radiant floor heating, we can actually do at a lot lower temperature. Um, we can do it around 120, well, 100 to about 130 degree water temperature. Whereas any kind of other hot water heating, usually we're, we're in about 180 degree range. So, so we can tie those two in pretty good. Tax credits, <clears throat> we'll stop right there. We have uh, some pretty good tax credits for geothermal, and that's one of the things that's, that's really making it make sense right now. It's a 30% tax credit without cap, so it's a full 30%. Uh, it's not a deduction, it's actually a credit. No cap, uh, and that's a total install cost, not just a quick credit. And any unused balance will carry forward until, right now, until the year 2016. Now these things could be changed, but that's what it stands right now. So for instance, that's a $6,000 tax credit for a $20,000 investment. They have to have a tax liability in order for them to take it back. This is kind of in a nutshell how geothermal works. Basically, it uses the energy from the sun. The earth is the solar collector that the sun shines on daily. Um, and we bury pipes in the ground, you utilize a refrigeration process, and then we can deliver very high efficient heating, cooling, and hot water, or hot water. And then, of course, that energy is, is replenished by the surrounding earth around that loop that we bury those pipes in the ground and, uh, and the sunshine. So it is a renewable. As far as efficiency goes, this is a little chart that shows basically we take a unit of electricity or a BTU if you want to do it that way. And we end up, from the power company, we end up getting three or four BTUs out of the ground. So it makes it four to five hundred percent efficient. Benefits, low cost of operation, and I'll show you a comparison here on a geothermal versus a conventional versus I think propane. I uh, can't remember how I did it. And comfort is one thing that a lot of people, they buy it usually for the tax credits and the cost of operation, but they end up having a lot of good things to say about the, the comfort levels of that you. Because unlike an air source heat pump, it's taking heat out of a more constant temperature. An air source or a conventional heat pump, you've got a unit sitting outside, it's taking heat out of that outside air. As that temperature drops, that unit doesn't have as much heat to pull out of the air, so it has to run longer, or it has to have help from an auxiliary distributor or electric distributor. So when it gets really cold, and the light comes on in the thermostat and the strips kick in, that's when the efficiency really drops down. With a geothermal unit, in most cases, I can size a unit where it never needs a strip whatsoever. We'll heat 100% from the compressor. And a lot of jobs that we're doing, and some of y'all may be running into this too, with these uh, custom homes, it, it's kind of, you're fighting over space a lot of the time. They, they're, they're using the outside of the homes more than they used to. They want uh, garden areas and patios and whatnot. And I've been on some houses and jobs, huge, huge projects. You would think somewhere they could come up with a place to set an outside unit. But it gets challenging with, with this. We don't have to do that. We can, in some applications, if we need to, and we don't have an inside place for equipment, we can go with some outside, but in most cases, we don't have to. And then it comes standard with 10 year parks and labor warranty. There again, the tax credit, and it helps with the hot water. And this line here gives me a heating cost for my geothermal unit. That's six hundred and thirty-four dollars. That's an annual heating cost. And then I've got a, a thirteen seer air source heat pump. It's at seventeen hundred and one dollars. And then a propane, a ninety percent efficient propane furnace. I think that's twenty-five hundred. But you get a total 
annual heating, cooling, and hot water cost for the geothermal unit on this project is, uh, and this is up in DPF, by the way, is $1,000 annually. What's the square footage in the house of that? This one is about probably 1,800, 1,900. Yeah. Basically, I can go ahead and give you a rule of thumb right now. Basically, a geothermal will, will take the best air source price operating cost to cut it down. Since the EPA recognizes geothermal systems as the most environmentally friendly, cost effective, and energy efficient heat and cooling technology available. <laughs> So you can make a significant contributions to a cleaner environment while saving up to 60%. That number you'll see, and they've got some brochures there, you may go from 60 to 70%, but that's, that's about what the average is. And that's a total energy bill. Trend is moving towards green. You hear green, uh, green building, carbon footprints, carbon emissions. <coughs> this is a good way to help lower their carbon footprint. If that's their interest, not everybody's on the bandwagon, but as far as the carbon footprint reduction, installing a geothermal system in a typical 2,000, 2,500 square foot home <coughs> is roughly equal to a benefit of having an acre of trees per year. So in 20 years, you'd have to be like having 20 acres of trees out there in the amount of carbon footprint reduction or carbon emission reduction. Types of equipment, we have forced air heating and cooling and hot water assist available. And, and we have them both in package and split units. Package unit would be something we would set inside in a basement. Ductwork connects to it, the uh, loop connects to it, nothing outside, nothing anywhere else in the house as far as equipment goes. Then we have uh, hot water. We can do hot water for radiant floor heating, or we can do just dedicated hot water. Somebody has a a hot tub and they just want to make sure that they keep water for that on hand <clears throat> cheaper than using electric or gas. We can do it with that. Or we can do cool heating or we can do chilled water for forced air cooling. Um, and then we have a unit that's a combination unit that does both. It does uh, heat hot water or dedicated hot water or it will heat. And that's what this is talking about is the desuperheater coil for domestic hot water. We need storage. Now, I run into, I'm running into more and more people that are using tankless or want to go tankless. We can do that, but we still need a tank. We can set the tankless downstream of the tank and we preheat the water so that coming from a well, we've typically got 55, 58, 60 degree water. That's normally we're heating that up to 120. Well, these geothermal units will take that tank and heat it up in the summertime to about 120 all by itself. And it calls for hot water, it goes through the tankless. If it's already at the temperature, it's not going to fire. It'll initiate the call, but it'll, since that temperature's hot enough, so it won't fire. Thus, say, gas or electric if they're going with electric tanks. One question, or one of the big questions, or, or concerns that comes up is the loops that bury in the ground that they're, they're plastic pipe. They look like what a well man would run water into the house. But it's, it's a little different. It has a, it has a higher ASTM numbers. It's a higher density. This is actually a piece of the pipe. It's plastic. We bury it. It's uh, life expectancy is about 200 years. Well, it only makes half of that. That's going to cover most of it's fused together, it's, it's a socket fusion. When you look at it, it would be like a little piece of PVC pipe that slides in here. But we actually heat it up to 500 degrees, plug it together, and it bonds. And the joint gets stronger than the pipe itself. And I'll, I'll sort of pass this around, and I'll be careful to toss it from table to table. 